After a night of explosions, the Ukrainian government is still in control of Kyiv, even as Russian troops move closer to the Ukrainian capital. According to the British Ministry of Defense, the bulk of Russia's forces are within 20 miles of Kyiv, but the Ukrainian army and air force are putting up a staunch resistance and inflicting greater casualties than the Kremlin anticipated. And our Pentagon team reports that the U.S. is seeing indications that the Russians are growing increasingly frustrated by their lack of progress. Joining me now is MSNBC military analyst and retired four-star General Barry McCaffrey. General, thank you so much. Um, a lot of people are surprised by the time it is taking Russia to get to these capitals. Um, and as I just said, our intelligence thinks that Russia is pretty frustrated by, by it. Um, wh what exactly is going on and what can you make of this? Well, I, the thing you have to really focus on, it seems to me, is the incredible political courage of President Zelensky and his senior civilian leadership, never mind the uh, Ukrainian military, which is putting up a fight. Uh, they have courage. You know, they're having, uh, they're calling up their reserves. Uh, people are taking part in militia defense units, uh, all of which indicates a very strong uh, stance by the <coughs> Ukrainian against this massive Russian uh, assault. We got to remind ourselves this is day four f coming up of the assault. The Russians have made no serious attempt yet to capture Kyiv, Kharkiv, or other major uh, metropolitan areas. They're on the outskirts, but we're seeing a reconnaissance, GRU, Spetsnaz uh, units uh, trying to encircle and destabilize the capital. If the Russians go after Kyiv, and they probably don't want to, uh, it could be a bloody mess and a terrible uh, optics uh, worldwide. They'll go in there with five, six, ten uh, tank mech battalions at the same time. We haven't seen that. Uh, so let's be filled with admiration, but I'm most encouraged by Germany stepping forward now uh, visibly and saying we're standing with the Ukrainians with lethal aid. And also the hundred other venues now that are communicating back to Russia, uh, they're out of line. Uh, Philharmonic uh, conductors being told they can't enter the United States. Norwegians telling them they, uh, they won't be allowed to compete uh, in ski events. So in a hundred ways, the world community is telling Putin and his senior military leaders, you've made a dreadful mistake. Um, I wonder, I, again, we, we, all indications are that the Ukrainians are putting up a much uh, stronger fight than was anticipated. They are arming everyday civilians. I know you said if they do try to take the capital city, it will get bloody. Is there a chance that Ukraine will be able to fend off the Russian army, at least the ground army here? And if they do, is there a risk that Putin does something potentially even worse? Is there a risk that what, Katie? Putin does something even worse, uses, you know, bombs the city. Yeah. Well, look, I, what I think your Ukrainians are capable of is causing so many Russian military casualties and, and also having so many other political, diplomatic, and economic uh, lines of reaction going into the Russian people uh, that it creates a new political calculus on the part of Putin and his senior people, or they finally, the generals come forward and saying, this isn't going to look good for us. And the oligarchs say, well, our money's being frozen. That's possible, uh, given the enormous courage of the Ukrainians, every bit of the population coming together on this. And surprisingly, to include the Russian-speaking areas who don't want to fall under Putin's domination. I wonder if he uh, so, is able, I'm sorry, General, I didn't mean to interrupt no, you, but I wonder if Putin no. is able to, to take the city and he's able to say to, to install a new government. Uh, is he going to be able to get a control of the military and the people? And how do you hold a city when the people, everyday individuals, are vowing to fight you off no matter what? Well, the phase we're in right now, though, uh, what the Russian armed forces are trying to do is to defeat and destroy the Ukrainian armed forces. They're not yet occupying. They're certainly not trying to... Uh, put up a puppet government yet. They probably have planning going on. They have agents inside uh, the Ukrainian government. Uh, but they're right now, they've got to beat the Ukrainian army in the field. And they're setting about that. And they have not yet committed the substantial amount of their forces. 
You know, I, we're, we're watching uncamouflaged Russian military vehicles lined up bumper to bumper. They're not yet in combat. What's happening in the eastern part of Ukraine is what most interests me. That's where the bulk of the Ukrainian armed forces are. How are they doing? They're doing pretty well, apparently. We gave them uh, these incredible Javelin mission, uh, missiles, anti-tank missiles. It's an hour to train somebody. It's a fire-and-forget missile. We've given them stingers, and Germans are sending more in. So the Russians are losing helicopters, attack helicopters, and transports. So we'll see. They've got to just bloody the Russians' nose. And, and if they come into Kiev and they, there's a house-to-house -house block to block battle. The problem is it'll destroy the city and cause immense civilian yeah. casualties. I, I think the Russians will do that if forced to. You know, this is interesting. I had this from the New York Times. The civilian resistance in Ukraine received instructions from the military on how to stop the Russians' advance. They were told to destroy a road if they saw tanks passing along it because fuel trucks were sure to follow it. They were told to burn a forest if they spotted Russian vehicles there and to shoot out tires on military vehicles if they had rifles and could shoot from a distance. Above all, the ministry advised people to keep themselves safe but make life for the Russian army as difficult as possible. And it seems like that is what's happening right now. Uh, General Barry McCaffrey, thank you so much for joining us on this Saturday. I know we're going to talk to you again very soon. Yep, good to be with you.